If you're watching this on YouTube, please don't forget to press the subscribe button below. It's free. Then you'll receive the latest notifications of videos. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday meditation gathering. This week, uh, we have uh, Jane Tipping and Paul Goodsmith, who will lead us in meditation. Then we'll have 20 minutes of silence. And after that, we're going to open it up for sharing. We end at 1045. Over to you, Jane and Paul. There we are. Yes. Okay, that works. Well, good morning, everybody. <laughs> Do you want to lead into this, Paul? Yes, we, uh, yeah. we we had the fortune of doing uh, uh, one of our monthly groups just last night on um, on Lesson 154, which is called I Am Among the Ministers of God. And, um, and we went into quite an interesting process with uh, several of the people in the group. And we thought we'd continue that with you uh, this morning, uh, reading a, a few passages from, from this section and maybe talking about it a little bit, and then leaving you, you with, a, with a question uh, uh, before entering into your meditation to give your meditation some direction. Yeah. So I, I have to say this is one of my favorite lessons in the book. Um, and I, I think because it just, it, it brings this sense of, I, I think all of us have a desire to be in service. Um, and it just, it, it just helps focus somehow and, and remind. So we're going to read a couple of paragraphs before we go into the meditation. And I'll begin. So again, for the people just joining, we're reading from lesson 154, I am among the ministers of God. Let us today be neither arrogant nor falsely humble. We have gone beyond such foolishness. We cannot judge ourselves, nor need we do so. These are but attempts to hold decision off and to delay commitment to our function. It is not our part to judge our worth, nor can we know what role is best for us. What we can do within a larger plan, we cannot see in its entirety. Our part is cast in heaven, not in hell. And what we think is weakness can be strength. What we believe to be our strength is often arrogance. I'm just going to go on to two. I'll read two. Okay. Whatever your appointed role may be, it was selected by the voice for God, whose function is to speak for you as well. Seeing your strengths exactly as they are, and equally aware of where they can be best applied, for what, to whom, and when. He chooses and accepts your part for you. He does not work without your own consent, but he is not deceived in what you are and listens only to his voice in you. So the lesson goes on to talk about the, the role of being a messenger a messenger is not the one who writes the message he delivers, nor does he question the right of him who does, nor ask why he has chosen those who will receive the message that he brings. It is enough that he accept it, give it to the ones for whom it is intended, and fulfill his role in its delivery. If he determines what the message should be or what their purpose is or where they should be carried, he's failing to perform his proper part. And then maybe six and we follow quits. There is one major difference in the role of heaven's messengers, which sets them off from those the world appoints. The messages that they deliver are intended first for them, and it is only as they can accept them for themselves that they become able to bring them further and to give them everywhere that they were meant to be. Like earthly, earthly messengers, they did not write the messages they bear, but they become their first receivers in the truest sense, receiving to prepare themselves to give. Now, we had a, a very interesting discussion yesterday about some aspects of this 
of this uh, piece. And um, what came to me while we were talking about it was, you know, I think that we're all to be equal and we're all messengers of God, whether we know it or not, whether we're conscious of that or not. We've been uh, created and directed uh, by God and through the Holy Spirit to uh, to learn certain lessons in this lifetime. And certainly for some people, it looks very different than for others. And we can have all kinds of ideas about, oh, well, this one's loving and this one's not. And yet, how could you possibly be on the wrong path? So if that's true for you and for me, then I think that must be true for everyone at the same time. So all the lessons are lessons in love and all the, uh, all the messages that we, that we have to give are in service to that. We may think that we have another choice. We may think that there's another will to follow. And, uh, and we may be arrogant enough to think that, that uh, we know better. Uh, but what we think doesn't affect the truth. The truth is much softer and kinder than anything that we can think about it. Um, so I leave you with this uh, in preparation for the meditation. What is your greatest lesson here? What's your biggest lesson here that you're here to learn and to teach? Because it's, of course, this we, both, we do both at the same time. What is your message to the world? How are you in service? Meditate on that, and we'll see you on the other side.
open your eyes and come back into the room. We have 17 minutes left for sharing your reflections and your questions. If you'd like to speak, raise your hand, or you can use the electronic hand at the bottom of the screen, and I'll invite you to take yourself off mute. Norman, take yourself off mute. Yes, <clears throat> excuse me. I was uh, down in Dublin a couple of months ago, but I was recovering from a bout attack, and I was supposed to go to a meeting which wasn't that far away from the station. So I decided I'd save the taxi car and just walk around. And the time I got there, my feet were aching, and I was feeling very tired and out of sorts. So I said, oh, I'm not going to. It's a lot of standing up and all the rest of it. I'll just quietly disappear and not draw attention to myself. So I got a taxi back down to the station, and the next train was an hour. So I was just sitting just beside, more or less in front of the inquiry office. And the young man walked past. He stopped, he looked at me, and he said, Are you a padre? I was had a quick look around to make sure he wasn't talking to somebody else. <laughs> and I said to him, don't smile at him and said no. And he smiled back and he said, have a nice day. And then just as he turned to walk away, he said, God bless you. And away he went. So I was sat there thinking, that's very strange. I wonder what makes him think I'm a minister. Especially in, in Dublin, it's a very Catholic sort of place. And, uh, <laughs> and <laughs> I said, look, look, maybe it's a case that was carried in a very old fashioned leather type case, you know, about the size of a big case, but fatter and, and it was brown. And then I'm wearing a dark suit, but it's, it's not black, I have a white collar, but I've got a nice tie. I wonder what made him think I was a minister. So I was rather perplexed. So I think it's just as the Jim and Paul were saying, uh, that might be a rather a, a strange example, but we are real, all, all ministers, but don't realize it. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's an exact fit, fitting thing to say, but certainly it explains an awful lot for me personally. I still haven't figured out why he thought it was a minister, though. <laughs> so thank you very much. Oh, and by the way, I wasn't going to say anything. And the voice came and said, throw it into the mix and see what happens. And that's something I would never, ever say, throw it into the mix. So I'm not sure if that's the ego or the Holy Spirit telling me to do that. <laughs> Thank you. Who would like to share? I'd just like to comment on what you said, Norman, because I think it's one of those examples of how the universe has a sense of humor. And I mean, the message was correct, right? And that's what this lesson is about. We are, there's, we are. And uh, that young man was just there as a nudge. I think it's a lovely story. would like to share. Lottie, take yourself off mute. Thank you for that um, journey inside. Um, I have a lodger. Uh, I speak about him in these meetings occasionally. And he's off sick at the moment, so he's at home a lot more than he used to be. And he um, and I often get into little arguments and he um, gets very irritated and says, I'm not going to argue about it, and that's it. And I'm not going to go into the details, uh, but the journey inside took me to, well, there's only one of us, so... Um, 
Yeah, I don't like it when he says he doesn't want to argue about it. I don't want to argue about it either. But it's something about who's right and who's wrong, who said what and who didn't, uh, always. And um, this morning we had a little argument and I went out walking um, because I was going out anyway. And I realized that what is needed is for me to demonstrate that it really doesn't matter. And that is being a minister, isn't it? It's, um, if, if it doesn't matter to me who's right and who's wrong, then my, I might hope that it won't matter to him either. And there is only one of us. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You gonna say something, Paul? That, that meditation brought me to a, a memory of the day that my that my father died and I, and I got a message I got a message that day about what I'm supposed to be teaching because uh, I remember learning about his, his passing from my mother at 6 o'clock in the morning I happened to be in Florida on a beach and uh, I walked along the beach and I, I said to myself, you know, I don't pray very much, God, but I think today I might need some help. And then I thought I had to do that silently. So I did that again, silently. And uh, and I got a response. And the response was not like one of my own thoughts, because my own thoughts are very linear. Uh, they, they, it's, it's like they can go very quickly, but it's like one word up the other. And this was like an entire thought all at once. There was no time lag. And the thought that came to me after that first uh, declaration was, I don't understand the apology because we're in communication all the time, which is part of the reason I don't pray, because I do believe that. I always believe that we're in communication all the time. And so, but now I know that I'm really in connection here. And, I, and I'm thinking, okay, what, what do I really need to, what am I really wanting to ask for today? And I said, you know, I just, I really need your help today. Just tell me where to go and what to say and, and uh, you know, and who to see. And the response that came back that second time was this. It was, uh, why would today be any different from any other day? Follow the path of your highest happiness and don't take yourself so seriously. And when I heard that, uh, it just made me so happy. I felt this 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 vibrational uh, thing in my in my in my whole body, like tingling. And it came up from the sand, and it came up through my entire body and out my head. And it was just pure joy. And I had to I had to laugh, and I was laughing so hard that I fell to my knees. And then I had to laugh about that. And so I agree with Che. And, uh, you know, the universe has a sense of humor. And uh, and if I had to say what my highest lesson is in this in this life, and what I what I try to uh, to give as well is, I do my best not to take myself or anybody else too seriously. Anybody else care to share? Vivian, take yourself off mute. You're still on mute, Vivian. Mute. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, I just would like to talk about an experience I had several years ago now in that way in that if we just um, allow the Holy Spirit to work through us amazing things happening we don't have to do anything quite a few years ago I was walking in Norwich uh, through one of its 
wonderful wide uh, lanes and I was walking on a certain path and then for no reason I shot right across to the other side of the lane and even as I was doing it I thought why am I doing this that was a strange thing when I bumped into a former client of mine I was a massage therapist and when I was dealing with her I knew Um, she really needed a hip operation and she was terrified of hip operations, anything to do with hospitals. She was wouldn't go there. Yet she was in agony with this hip. She was a horse rider. Um, anyway, when I met her on that day, I myself had had two hip operations and experienced them for myself. So we bumped into each other. She's And I said, how lovely to see you. How are you? She was looking quite old. She said, oh, I'm in such agony in my with my hip and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I told her about my hip operations and said to her, you know, you really need to get this done. Mine worked incredibly well. I was out of hospital in three days. There were no, it was just like a miracle for me. It went so well, both of them. And um, so I didn't think any more about it, apart from encouraging her to do that. And then again, somewhere later, two or three years later, I met her um, at a massage that practice. I wasn't practicing myself anymore then. So we met at the same massage therapist and she was looking wonderful. She said, Vivian, she said, I, I just... Oh, it's so lovely to see you. I need to thank you for telling me and encouraging me to have the hip operation. She looked years younger than mm. when I met her. And I thought, do you know what? Just letting the Holy Spirit move you where you're needed to be moved. That's all you have to do. Just be available. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And understand that we don't know what things are for. Just follow directions. <laughs> I literally felt as if I'd been shoved across the other side of this wide lane. And yes. was so, why am I doing this? <laughs> That's a great story. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Who would like to share? Maybe Linda, take yourself off mute. Yes. Thank you for that. Um, yeah. I'd just like to share. Um, I've had, I, last Wednesday, on my birthday, I had an MRI scan. Um, this has been going, something's been going on since the 15th of July. And the, I've had a scan, I've had a, an MRI, I've had an X-ray, an ultrasound, and still no one can come up with anything. They haven't told me anything. Um, but I had this MRI, and they said people have said, "Oh, it's really loud. Oh, it's horrible and clangy." Mm. So I go in there, lay on the couch. She put these things in my ears, and, and I laid there, and I laid there, laid there, and I'm talking to Jesus and Holy Spirit, God, just talking. Jesus was sitting there. <laughs> And then she takes the hearing things off. And I said, aren't I going through the tunnel? She said, you've been in there for the last half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, I didn't hear any loud noises. I said, but I've been talking to Jesus and the Holy Spirit and God all the time. You know, I always talk to them. So I didn't hear a word. I didn't hear a noise. I didn't even know I'd been in there. Wow. And I've told loads of people have asked me, oh, how was the MRI? So I tell them all the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I don't care. <laughs> I tell everyone that I talk to that loads of people say, oh, I'm so lonely. It's all whole when I live on my own. So awful on your own, isn't it? No. I've always got Jesus and the Holy Spirit, God, all the angels, all the people that have passed over. I, I've got loads of people I talk to. <laughs> so that's how I, or you go out mm -hmm. 
and smile at anyone. I'm not, I won't be a, a, a talker teacher, teacher, but I just mm. love living love. Wonderful. Beautiful. And, and that's what I think. I'm not clever, I'm not articulate, just comes out. It's so, yeah, that's me. Yeah, Finished. That's <laughs> It comes out wonderfully and beautifully, and it's very clear. Yeah. You know, the message I get from you is, is the older I get, the more friends I have <laughs> at, at home. Don't have to go anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Who'd like to share? I'll jump in here. I uh, I love all the shares. It's wonderful, like miracles. It's beautiful, and uh, um, I handed over the reins to Holy Spirit to just guide me through the day and not to not to decide what to do, uh, um, but let, leave it all to Him. and And my days always flow beautifully. It's just um, a brilliant thing. The other day, um, Teresa and I were having uh, lunch. In, outside of a restaurant and and then down down the street there was this guy walking towards us and he was screaming and shouting and cursing at different countries and religions and he was so angry and oh god I, and i just felt um i felt so upset by this you know my um and so then um i just looked at teresa and we just decided let's send him blessings so we sent him blessings of I bless you in your peace. I bless you in your gentleness. I bless you in your kindness. I bless you in your happiness. I bless you in your wellness. And um, and then he stopped. And I thought, oh, wonderful. I can go back to peace. <laughs> so that was a, a little miracle. You know, it's just the Holy Spirit's guiding all of us all through the day. If we listen, mm -hmm. I'm done. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ben. Well, I'd like to send you all my blessings, yeah. my blessings for being the powerful teachers and students that, uh, that you are every day, whether you like it or not. Whether you want to or not. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I yeah. bless you all in your happiness and your peace and your gentle awakening. And take yourself off mute and thank Jane and Paul. Oh, thank you, Jane. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.